for your agenda, for his agenda. Amen. Yeah. Remember the woman that got caught in adultery, what they do? They brought her right to Jesus. Yeah. And they said, we call her in adultery. They was ready to kill her. I still always say, where was he at? Yeah. <laughs> How did they catch her? Where was he at? And so Jesus kneeled down and he started writing something in the sand. And then one by one, they all started leaving. I'm going to use my sanctified imagination. I believe Jesus started writing names of people they was with. Okay. What about Sally? What about Jamie? What about Sally Sue? They said, okay. So by the time she looked up, Jesus said, where are your accusers? She looked around. She said, there is none. And Jesus said, and I accuse you not either. So what, what was up with that? Amen? So Mary said, I, I know not a man. So when we think about the promises of God, we seem to think that the promises of God are impossible. I got you saying something. When we think about the promises of God, if God ever promised you something and you thought it was impossible, mm -hmm. Mary said, how should this be seeing that I know not a man? So in, in verse 38, Mary said, Behold to the handmaid of the Lord, be it unto me according to thy word. So she said, instead of her saying, well, the bank said, I don't have enough credit. I ain't going to be able to do that. My lawyer said, I need to have these documents put together before I get started on anything. The accountant said, the numbers wasn't going to add up. I ain't going to be able to do this. My friend said, but he got six kids. What you going to marry him for? Right. My family said, well, you shouldn't be going that way. Mary said, okay. 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 Mary said, okay. 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 If this is your will, okay. Right. So sometimes God is trying to promise us, we can't try to figure it right out and talk about all the impossibilities right. and all the reasons why it ain't going to happen. Right. We need to just he say, okay. Need to start his ministry. It's okay if you got to go through a process. It's okay if you got to get a mentor. It's okay if you got to get somebody to tutor you to get where it is that you want to go. Amen. So we just got to be patient with the process and know that the promises of God are yea and amen. I can't see the end of the tunnel, but I know that there's light. I know that there's light. I know it's a pot of gold at the end of my rainbow. Amen. And then we just got to get to it. So Sarah and Abraham, they held on to the promises of God. That's why we're here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's true. Sarah was 90 and Abraham was 100 years old. And God kept promising him that he was going to be the father of okay. many nations. Yeah. Many nations. How is this? I'm old. I ain't even doing it no more. How am I going to be the father of many nations? So when God, if he's the same spirit that quickened and raised Jesus Christ from the day, can raise anything that's going on in your life. Amen? Hallelujah. Amen. So some of us don't know our true identity. We have to realize that we are the sons of Abraham. We are the seed of Abraham. The blessings of the Lord are ours. We have privy to that. Amen? We have an inheritance in Christ Jesus. And we just need to take hold of it. That's all. It's there waiting for you. If you had a rich uncle that passed away and you didn't know it, but that money was in a trust fund for you, is that money yours? Yes. It's still yours. It's a gift. Is there something that you have to do to get this gift? Yes. What's that? Go get it. That's it. <laughs> That's it. It's a gift. It's a gift. It's a gift. Just like salvation. Salvation is free. It's a gift. It's nothing you can do. It's nothing that you can work for. You can't be good enough for salvation. It's a free gift from God. The inheritance, once you walk into the salvation, all the rest of the good gifts comes along with it. It's all yours. It's all privy to us. Amen. Amen. So the promises of God are improbable. They seem improbable. But the reality is, it's yours. It's already yours. When um, Saul anointed David to be king, and he came to Jesse's house, and he said, Jesse, where's your boy? He lined everybody up except for David. He looked at him, he said, no, it ain't him. No, it ain't him. No. Mm -mm, it is, is this it? Is this all your boys? Is well, no, I got one little shepherd boy out there tending the sheep. His name is that. Go get him. Go get him. Now, when he came, he said he was coming to 
to anoint a man to be king. Wow. Saul seen David as a man already. Wow. We have to see ourselves the way God sees us, that we can have privy to whatever it is that God has for us. So David was a little boy. He came, he anointed David king, everybody knew about it. David went on back to the sheep. <laughs> went on back to him, walked around, I am the king. Everybody must bow to me. He went on back and took care of his business. So sometimes when we get a word from the Lord, we got to remember that this isn't going to happen right now. Because for some people, prophecies just mess up their mess. They get a word from the Lord and they think it's supposed to happen right now. They said, okay, you're going to be a great man of God. You're going to do this. And you and your husband are going to be millionaires. And y'all going to own all these businesses. And y'all going to have 29 employees. He didn't tell you that was husband number four. And if you were going to file bankruptcy three times, you would get that car. He didn't tell you he was going to go to jail and it was going to be a jailhouse ministry. Right, right, right. Hey, forget that part. <laughs> right, right, right. They didn't tell you all the way you got to go through, right? That's right. But you're going to have to go through to get to. Really? The promises of God is a process. It's a process. I, I tell people, I tell people, I used to party Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. <laughs> then I just started partying Saturday and Sunday. Then I just started partying on Saturday, and then I just didn't have a desire to party at all. Yeah. And then some people, they just get saved and they stop everything. They don't do nothing. I always say, that's a miracle. That's a miracle. But most of us, it's a process. And I'm telling you, I was smoking weed, filled with the Holy Spirit, speaking in tongues, going to church every day. If somebody wanted to ride home from church, I'd be like, I'm not going that way. Because my car smelled like weed and I didn't want them to get in the car. <laughs> but that's just keeping it real. Yeah, real. I had a blunt in the ashtray. <laughs> Amen. It's a process. It's a process. <laughs> Daily. Okay. Yeah. When I first met Pastor, I told him, I said, I love the Lord and everything, but I didn't have it sometimes. <laughs> he just couldn't believe it. He's like, well, you are just too real for me, sister. You, you just real as they come. <laughs> And if you catch me on the right day, I might cuss you out. <laughs> but I don't smoke weed no more. <laughs> I still might cuss you out. But we doing it with the wrong intentions. Amen. So we have to have the ABCs of God when it comes to that. And A stands so we have to have the right attitude. All right. B, we have to have the right behavior. And C, we have to have the right conversation. Oh, the ABCs of God. A, we have to write the right attitude. B, the right behavior. And C, the right conversation. Dearly beloved, God calls us his dearly beloved. Please don't call yourself anything less. Please be conscious of your self-talk. Don't call yourself stupid. Right. Don't call yourself dumb. Pastor got a bad habit of calling himself crazy and I always stop him. Don't call yourself crazy. Please don't do that. And then it's just idle words and we don't need anything about it, but the Bible says there's so much power in our words. There's life and death in the power of our tongue, so we need to be conscious of everything that we're saying. So I could have done that a better way, but I'm not stupid. Right. Say it. Amen. I could have, I've learned a lesson. I know how not to do that, but I'm not dumb. So we need to be conscious of what we say to ourselves. In Hebrews, 6 and 12, that ye be slothful, but followers of them who through faith and patience inherit the promise. So when it talks about slothful, it's saying don't be dull. Be on fire for Christ. My because faith. the Bible says that if you are lukewarm, you're going to do what? You do out your mouth. So we can't be lukewarm. We got to be on fire. Be on fire. All the time, every day, all day. On yeah. fire for Christ. Yeah. You should be letting your light shine. Some, it should be Always. something different about you. People Always. should know this something different about yes. you because you have the light of the world inside of you. The Bible says that we are the salt of the earth. Yeah. And you think about some food, if you take some food and you don't put no salt on it and you taste it, it tastes a little dull, right? right? But if you put some salt on it, it gives it flavor. And that's what we're supposed to do to the earth. We're supposed to give the earth flavor. We're supposed to be the salt of the earth. And it also says, follow them through faith and patience, inherit the promise. Through faith and patience, that's that process. 
We got to be patient through the process. All right. And whatever you do, don't pay for pray for patience, because then all kind of stuff going to be testing you when it comes to your patience. Oh, Lord Jesus, my roommate in South Africa. She tested my patience. And I just said, Lord, I'm, I'm going to let love win. So I was already armed with the ammunition that I needed. So this was her first trip. She had never went anywhere. I said, what makes you go to South Africa? You ain't never been down the street. She was like, I just wanted to experience something different. So every day, she would get up. She would pack everything up in her suitcase. And then in the morning, she would go to her suitcase and zip, 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 and looking for stuff. And I'm laying in the bed. I'm trying to let her leave first so I can have my prayer time with the Lord and everything. So she zip, zip, zip. Then I just said, turn it to me. I said, if you don't unpack that stuff and put it in that bathroom and put that stuff in the drawer so you don't have to keep on making noise and waking me up every morning, you ain't going to like it. The next morning, that stuff was unpacked in the bathroom, in those drawers. So you can have a tower, huh? I'm like, shit up here. Zip, zip, zip. Zip, zip, zip. And she did, what are you looking for? My key, here, take my key, just leave. <laughs> So Hebrews 6 and 12, that ye be not slothful, but followers of him through faith and patience, inherit the promise. So we got to be patient and know that the promises are coming to us, amen? Amen? When you inherit something, you don't have to work for it, it's a gift. So we just have to know that it's, it's, a, it's a gift. And then the last scripture that I want to go over is 2 Peter 1 and 4. 2 Peter 1 and 4. The Bible says we go from glory to glory. We go from faith to faith. We go from grace to grace. So sometimes we not only have to love, love win, we have to love grace win. My God, yes you do. And sprinkle in a little mercy. Praise the Lord, saints. Today was an awesome word given by Lady Teresa McCurry. The promises of God. Do you know that all you have to do is just say, okay, God, it's your will, not my will. Come on and join us at 8607 Madison Road, Cleveland, Ohio, 44102. If you would like to contact us, call us at 216-916-9270. Seven zero. Be blessed.